This is video two for Computer Science 2124. Uh, we, last time in video one, we talked about why anyone might want a linked list. And you're convinced now, I know, that yeah, sometimes we're gonna have to use a linked list. How on earth are we gonna build one? Well, we'll first of all get up to cruising altitude, I don't know, maybe 40,000 feet, and look at it from above as an ADT, an abstract data type. Linked list, wow, that's a nice juicy marker. Linked list, abstract data type. Ah oh, yes, that term. I know he used it before our infinite spring break. What on earth does that mean? Abstract data type means you define this thing in terms of how you want to be able to use it. In other words, you think of the operations that you want to have possible on this object, like put something in, take something out, find out what something is, all that kind of stuff. And you make a laundry list or even a, a Christmas wish list. That's, that's more pleasant than a laundry list. You make a, a list of all the things you want this to be able to do. So when we're talking about a linked list as an ADT, we don't even soil our hands with dynamic memory allocation pointers and all that stuff. That's scary and it's even irrelevant to what it's got to be able to do. What things, what kind of operations do we want? Well, we know enough about classes now that these things don't make themselves. So one of the things we want this linked list to be able to do is to make a new one, create a new one. Emphasis on the create. Make one where there wasn't one before. And remember, if, if we're gonna create it, and yeah, okay, I'll go ahead and let a secret out. It is going to involve dynamic memory alloc allocation. Of course it is. If we've gotta create one, and it's ours, and we own it, then eventually we've gotta clean up the mess. So two, I'm gonna say uh, destroy? Is that a good word? No. I'll, I'll use delete. I'll overload the delete term from C++. Delete an old one. I don't know how old it is, but I'll call it that. Delete one that we're not using anymore. Because since we're now in dynamic memory allocation, there is definitely going to be a mess to clean up. Otherwise, we'll get one of those uh, dreaded memory leaks. Once we have one, uh, it would be nice to be able to put something in it, would it not? Insert. Insert what? A uh, cat. No, I've done that an athlete, I know, a color, uh, or a can of food. Very topical all of a sudden. Uh, I don't think so. Insert something, S-T-H-G for something. The something is irrelevant to being a linked list. We don't know, we don't care what the something is. We just wanna be able to insert something in the list. Why did I say the list instead of a list? I guess that's kind of a picky point and I might change my mind later. But for the moment, I'm taking the point of view of one particular object, one thing, and then the abstract data type, we'll generalize that to where we can have as many of these things as we want or as many as we need. We put something in there, uh, it'd be nice to be able to take it out. Remove something from the list. So, now these are not in order. Remember, we can't, we can't really count on any particular order of these operations even being used, except, except for these very first two. We've got to make one before we can do any of the rest of this stuff. And the last thing we do better be to delete it. So these are definitely out of order. So, so far, we'll make one, put stuff in, take stuff out, put stuff in, take stuff out. We don't know when, but it's going to happen. And then eventually get rid of it when we're done with it. There's the life cycle that's not apparent by the order of steps I've got up here. Uh, steps, these are operations, they're not steps. Um, when we put something in, maybe while it's there, we want to take a look at it. Get something, S-T-H-G, from the list. And you might wonder why that's a separate operation. Maybe we put a bunch of stuff in the list and we need to reference it later, take another look at it, but we're not ready to take it out yet. So that's a separate operation. Putting something in there and then taking a look at the data that we've put in there, that's, that's a completely separate operation from taking it out. So it's not going to be exactly like our bounded buffer was. Um, and, and, and is that it? You know what? I think that's going to be good enough for now. I think I will be adding, yes, I definitely will be adding stuff later. But to get the ball rolling on an abstract data type, I think this will do it. And that's only five minutes. I've got more time on this we can actually start looking at some real life code design.
Oh boy, C++, no, hold your horses. Code design is where we start thinking about what steps we're gonna to have to follow, just generically stated algorithm steps to actually accomplish each one of these things. And it turns out, uh, we don't even have to do that in any particular order. I'm gonna start with the first one, which by the way, reminds me, just so that we don't get cold on absolutely everything we learned last time, we have names for these things. Create a new one. I heard you all yell at one time. That's got to be the constructor. Very good. If you all speak together, I can actually hear you. And then delete an old one. Yes, yes, gracious. The destructor. Insert something in the list. If I do that, then after I've accomplished that, the list is gonna be different than it was before. So you know what? That must be a mutator. I apologize for the handwriting on this. I mean, you can just rewind the video a little bit and hear what I was saying when I wrote it down. Sorry, that's about the best I can do. Remove something from the list, that's also gonna change it. That's also a mutator. I'll see if I can write this nice and clearly. M-U-T-A-T-O-R. And it looks like we got just about everything except we do not have this. When we get something from the list, if you believe what I said about it earlier, whoops, somebody's leaning against my easel, it's gonna fall over. Uh, get something from the list is not gonna change the list. We, ju we just get the data, get a copy of the data that's been stored somewhere in the list, and that's not gonna change it at all. So that, for the moment at least, is our one and only accessor, A-C-C-E-S-S-O-R. There. Nice stall, huh? Now we can look at the code design. We might as well, since we don't know any better at this point, we might as well go through these things in order. So I'm just gonna start with the constructor. How do you suppose Dr. Emlin starts off with code design? Well, he starts off by drawing a picture, but actually this time I'm gonna start off by asking myself uh, on your behalf, ask some questions. The constructor, we always have to ask ourselves, is there any setup required? Abbreviated as setup. Is there anything we need to do? Um, well, let's see. Our private variables are, we haven't even talked about private variables. Uh, so I don't know how much setup we're actually gonna be able to design at the moment. Um, I'll, I'll say yes. And again, fall back on the cats and the athletes and all that. Well, let's not fall back on them. Let's refer back to the cats and the athletes and all that. How did we keep up with who had the gold medal and who my cat was and all that stuff? If you recall, if you recall, before we even started the dynamic memory allocation, we had to have a pointer variable that was going to be like the anchor to point to the very first one. In generic speak for a linked list, we will usually call that the head pointer. Yes! Uh... Set up the head pointer. And even a little more description that I think does deserve some space on my very expensive real estate of the whiteboard here. Set up the head pointer, which will, this is pointer, PTR. My handwriting's not any better on a small whiteboard. Set up the head pointer, which will always point at the first note in the list. Set up head pointer, which will always point at the first note. Now, you can go back and review the example 10 about the cats and go back and review your own solution to the Olympic medals program. Um, we had one pointer that was hard coded in that always pointed at the first thing in line. Because if we said stuff like, well, take the gold medal pointer and now make that point to the silver medal person, then we've got a memory leak all of a sudden. Our, our gold medal, gold medalist just drifted out into space. There's no way to get him back. If I had done the same thing with the very first cat pointer, the one that points to the first thing in the list, I would have had a huge memory leak and not been able to get anything back if I kept moving that down the line. So there is gonna be some head up, uh, some head up, uh, some set up. We do need to point this to the first node in the list. Um, so, well, if we try to do it before and after, 
I've got a head pointer. I made that small because that's a pointer variable. That's not a structure. I've got a head pointer and it's garbage. It doesn't point at anything. And my after picture, so that's why I'm gonna draw a picture for everything. It's still gonna be there. It's a private variable, it's not going anywhere. Uh, but the problem is when I'm creating one and we're inside the constructor, which is called on our behalf automatically by the system. I didn't call the constructor. All I did was define a variable of type link list now that I have one, imaginary one. There's nothing for the head pointer to point at. The program hasn't had a chance to use its new link list object and actually insert something in the list. So there's nothing for the head pointer to point at. I'm trying to lead you into say, uh, well, if there's nothing for the head pointer to point at, then let's make it zero. Ah, of course, make it zero. Here's the problem. If we say the head pointer is initially zero, then looking down the line to avoid crashing the program, every other operation in the class, every other member function, before it tries to do its job, is gonna to have to check and see if the head pointer actually points at something yet. That's an important point, let me say that again. If we decide to follow our own convention that I suggested to us, that we set pointers that don't point at anything yet, set that to zero, if we point that to zero, or set it to zero, then every one of our other operations, if we end up with 15, I don't think we will, but all the other operations, before they proceed, are gonna to have to check and see if there's anything there. They're gonna to have to check and see if the head pointer is set to zero or not. That's not a good idea. A theme, a theme that I'll put over here on the side, uh, I'll just say it and you can write it down. Uh, an overriding theme for these containers and so forth where we gotta keep our eye on, oh, I don't want too many, oh, I don't want it too slow and so forth, is we want the general case, the general case to run as quickly as possible. The general case, keep the common case fast. That's, that's how it's commonly stated. Keep the common case fast. What's the common case? Well, if we've got a linked list at all, we're probably gonna be using it. We're probably gonna be putting things in there. The common case is that the list is not empty. So this, this is a very special case before we've used the list at all. And what we've done here by setting this to zero, we've made it so that every other operation is gonna be slowed down at least a little bit because they've gotta check and make sure it's not zero before they proceed. It's almost a cheating solution. It's a finesse solution. We just say, well, if this is going to be a special case that we have to test every time, that the head pointer is zero and doesn't point at anything, then let's just go ahead and point it at something. If the common case is the list is not empty, let's just make the list not empty. So what we could do is say, okay, head pointer, here's you a node to point at. And this we will definitely want to set to zero the next pointer in this node, because at this point it's the absolute only node in the list, but we don't have any data to put in there. Remember all the stuff that we're describing right here, this is in the constructor. This is before they've ever even had a chance to call insert or anything else. So there's nothing to put in here but garbage. Holy moly, what a ridiculous solution. That doesn't look like it's finessing anything, but it has. It's finessed away the boundary condition Another term there, it's finessed away the boundary condition of an empty list. As soon as the constructor has had its time to initialize our list, the list from that point forward will never be empty. It's always got at least one node in it, even though in this case, the node that it points at has got pure garbage in it. Just doesn't make any sense at all. It seems absolutely illogical, and I've actually used up all the time for this video as well. So this is really gonna be like a soap opera. You'll just have to wait and find out what's gonna happen in the next video. And that's where I'll start. See you online.